Hi, Chris Petri. We're back, part two. Painting a busy scene in watercolor. If you didn't see part one, please go back. Check out part one. Um, we're doing a progression of how we're going to take this scene, a busy um, scene of the boardwalk. Uh, this is where uh, I grew up in New Jersey, nearby the, uh, the shore. This is in Wildwood, New Jersey, in the United States. Um, beautiful ocean here right next to the boardwalk and um, the beach and lots of action and activity and people everywhere walking around and enjoying all the great stuff here. There's games, there's food, there's um, uh, stores, um, just all kinds of great fun here. So if we have a photograph like this or if we're even at this scene here just being there and looking at everything and saying I want to paint that how are we gonna do it well I, I have this uh, method I'm just gonna kinda of just walk through it here quickly and and we'll see how we can do that let's take a look at the uh, finished painting now this is a finished painting but it's still um, you know if this is more impressionistic than I usually paint but uh, I did this painting in a little different style because when you when you have a busy scene like we're looking at um, I just find it more fun and more relaxing and peaceful just to kind of do it in an, in an impressionistic fashion versus trying to uh, maybe uh, take many 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 hours of trying to get everything exactly as I see it in the photograph or if I was there so we have um, plenty of interesting things in here that really gives you the same feel as the photograph I just you know I didn't put as many people let's say and I didn't put in every single detail of all the stores and the the arcades but I did put enough detail in here that you get that feeling of very you know lively scene with people moving around in the, the scene on the boardwalk and so I have just enough and you kind of get that feeling from this that you know it is a, a busy day there's people on the boardwalk it looks exciting plenty of beautiful sunlight in the picture um, we have the sunlight coming from this side of the picture across and we can also see that by the um, shadowing underneath the figures here going to the left so we know our lights coming from this side and how do we get to this scene this this more busy scene of this painting I always say break it down into smaller um, uh, chunks before you get into the main painting of doing this so we're gonna basically say that we're gonna do this in a, a glazing fashion so we're gonna do three three glazings one two and then a third to get to our um, final painting that look that we're looking for so I'm using my uh, typical palette that I always use if you're new to my uh, channel if you if you just type in Chris Petri my palette you'll see my palette the colors I use I describe exactly what's in my palette the colors and so forth but I basically been, I've been using the same palette for many years the same colors once in a while I will use a new color here and there but for the most part I use the same so this is my palette and the colors just a quick look at the colors <clears throat> warmer warmer colors on the left and then you know the cooler colors on the right and so far we just use basically two colors two to three colors we use some cobalt blue and we use some raw umber so we use cobalt blue raw umber um, we're basically using um, square brushes or flat brushes for the most part we'll use uh, a needle point brush occasionally and we should have it we wet this first so on this um, compositional swatch here we did we did some light pencil marks to just give get the overall overall idea of what the layout of the design is in the painting which is the boardwalk boardwalk the powerful thrusting lines going this way of the boardwalk leading us into the horizon and then the nice dynamic uh, undulating building buildings and stores and, and awnings of the boardwalk huts 
and buildings. So we'll call this the first step is getting in that first light wash, first light glazing. I wet the paper first, let it sit for a second or two, then I went in and did my cobalt blue, raw sienna and raw umber for the warm spots. So in a sense we're putting in cooler blue sky, some cool spots here and there on the um, other lower section of the painting. And then we have some warm spots that we're definitely going to put in there for a nice hot sunny day. The uh, sienna and the uh, raw umber and raw sienna. So that's the first wash. We let that completely dry. And then now once that's completely dry we're going to do our second um, wash. Now the second wash will be the um, tonal values, the middle tonal values. So not the super dark tones or values, but the middle tones. So like, you know, the this will save the darker tonal values, the very darkest darks for the last wash. So this second wash is going to be the middle tones or middle values. So we're going to go in and we're going to go in and get our cobalt blue, which we've been working with, and a little bit of a burnt umber to gray that down a little bit. Um, I'm also going to go in and get some uh, cerulean blue and then again we're going to use the same colors raw umber raw sienna raw umber and then we'll also get some uh, cadmium red we'll use some cadmium red in there so we'll have some cadmium red raw umber raw sienna cerulean blue cobalt blue maybe a little french ultramarine too and maybe even a little bit of um We'll have some mineral violet, which is purple. We'll have some purple too as well. We'll keep that with our cooler colors over here, and then we'll keep our warmer colors over on this side. And then we're going to start going in and get, getting our uh, middle middle tones. Okay, I'm working with square brushes again. And here we're not going for that finish look. We're just going for um, just to do our composition here just so we can kind of get some ideas going. So I'm going to use my, actually I'll use my painting for a reference. So I'm going to use this painting here that I did uh, today as a reference to just do my compositions here. So I'm working in reverse really. So as, in essence we're really doing, we should be doing this first, getting our ideas out first in small compositions to lay out the ideas and it also gives us time to warm up with the ideas of the painting that we're going to do so that when we go when we get in and do the more finished painting we already have it worked out in our in our minds and we're also comfortable with the feel of things so that once we get into that finished painting we're already comfortable with the layout and everything and the colors and so forth so it just makes the finished painting go way easier okay so now we'll go in and we'll just first thing I'm going to do is get some uh, burnt umber for that awning up here. Now this is a pretty pretty dark tone, tonal value. But we'll get we'll get it in now, we'll start doing this now. Then I'll change that and add a little bit of raw sienna raw sienna to that so that I can make a little change in t color. Maybe I'll add some okay now this is fun this is just a composition here we're not trying to be too accurate we're trying to get the angles correct And eventually I'm going to um, shift over and use some of my my needlepoint brush. And I might do that now. Since this is a really small composition, I'm going in and using a really small brush here. And now the key is if you have plenty of different colors out on your palette, 
you know you have fun you just mix up some different colors and the key here is variation lots of variation so this way it looks like there's all different kinds of um, varieties of colors and things happening and it doesn't look uh, kind of boring and and you've probably heard me say this many a time that as we get into the distance things get a little cooler more blue you know more blue blue mixed into the colors as you go off into the distance here colors are more um, vibrant closer and then as the distance it tends to soften out the colors and make them look a little cooler and then We'll also put out some yellow and uh, a little bit of orange. There's a tram car here. Okay, again, we're not going for perfection here. We're just trying to get some ideas out some color ideas I'll add a little bit of a little bit of red to that yellow for some orange and yellow variation and then we'll we'll come over to the other side of the painting and we'll do some And those are some buildings on the right hand side so we're just gonna fill in those buildings a little bit get some color on there again this is the middle tones so we're and I'm mixing the colors as, as you can see I'm really so we've got a lot of middle tones um, already here and that's looking pretty good and then there's some uh, a couple signs that are up here and there's a, like a another building there And then I'll put some directional lines, and there are some directional lines on the uh, the actual wood planks of the boardwalk. And there's like a concrete or a uh, special uh, wood board for the tram car that drives across the boardwalk. And we have some figures we're going to put in too, so we'll put in a few figures as well. And so I'll consider once we st this is a good secondary place to stop on our second glazing we can actually um, probably go in and do some figures but I think we'll we'll let this go for now and we'll we'll save the figures for our final for our final um, glazing which will be the third glazing so we had our step one super light wet the paper first blue and uh, some gold colors for the warm and cool of the sky and the warmth of the buildings and the boardwalk. Then we have our second glazing. We're getting into some of the middle tones, capturing those in the painting. Uh, a couple darks too. So we wanted to kind of block in that uh, building on the left hand side, the roof roof uh, of the building, the mansard roof. And we blocked in a little bit of the tram car here. So now in our third final glazing, we're going to do the darkest darks. The, and then the, and then the final details and we'll do some figures too as well in here and these are again just compositional practice runs to figure out our ideas on how we're gonna make this painting 